Hi everyone, Mark Derlin here, and we're going to talk about how to fix your short game. And I've actually quantified it down to three places that I see people go wrong in the short game. So we're going to discuss all three of those areas and then give you corrections. But before we get to that, when the video's over, please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and comment. Okay, so there's a few things we need to go over. First and foremost, when I start my short game schools or short game lessons or just a clinic about short game, I like to define what is short game. And short game is we're close enough to the green that we need less than a full swing. So some words that should pop into our mind when we start thinking short game is are soft, delicate, now, within the short game, we have a couple different shots. One is a chip, and the other is a pitch. And I always like to start my golf school's lessons that pertain to short game with defining the two because I hear a lot of interesting answers. And I'm going to give you a good way to not get them confused. So a chip is a ball that rolls further than it flies, and a pitch is a ball that flies further than it rolls. So the analogy I give my students so they can remember is a chip remembers along the ground but a pitch is in the air. So think about a pitcher in baseball throws the ball in the air they don't roll it along the ground. So pitch, pitcher, in the air, chip, along the ground. So hopefully that'll keep you from getting it confused going forward. Now I like to separate the two for a lot of reasons. One of those reasons is there's a setup, there's a technique, and there's certain clubs that we use with each of them. The other reason I like to separate it is if we can analyze the golf course correctly, it'll really tell me which one I need to do. So if I'm behind a bunker and I need to come up over the bunker, that would be a pitch. I've got to get it in the air, can't roll it through the bunker. We've tried, but it doesn't work. And if I'm alongside the green and I've got quite an expansive green to roll the ball across, well that would be a chipping opportunity for me. Now in some of my other videos I've talked about intention. And I find that when it comes to the short game, people's intentions, again, especially when they get behind a bunker and they've got to fly it in the air over the bunker onto the green, they're just wishing, hoping, praying uh, something good is going to happen. But by the end of this video, you'll have a much more solid uh, intention as far as setup and execution that will give you a better percentage of hitting these shots the right way whenever you see them. So as I mentioned earlier, there's three places, I've quantified it into three places that I see people go wrong when it comes to short game. I don't care if they're chipping or pitching, it, it works for both of them. And what we're going to get into next is I'm going to describe to you what these are and then I'm going to give you fixes for each. Okay, so before we get into the faults and the fixes as it pertains to our short game or chipping and pitching, I want to just expand on, on chipping and pitching a little bit more. So a good visual, it's not always going to be this relationship, but to get a good visual in your head, Think of a chip as one-third in the air, two-thirds along the ground. And then you can think of your pitch as two-thirds in the air, one-third along the ground. Now, there, as I mentioned before, there are some differences as far as setup. There's a difference as far as technique. And there's a difference as far as clubs that we use. And I want to go over that quickly. And as I'm going over this, we'll start to identify those three places that I see people go wrong and I'll give you some great fixes for it. So let's start with chipping. Remember that's a ball that rolls further than it flies. So typically I'm going to use a less lofted club. Now you might be somebody who uses two clubs. I use my 60 and I use, we'll make it easy, I use my, fit, uh, my pitching wedge. So if you're chipping you're going to use the less lofted one which would be 
your pitching wedge. Now some people go all the way down to 7 iron. They like to use their 7 iron, 8 iron, 9 iron. It really just depends on the person and the pattern. But when we're chipping, most of the time we're going to see one of those less lofted clubs because we've got a little bit of room to let the, the ball roll out. Now, if I'm in a scenario where the pin's a little closer, maybe I will default to a more lofted club. But I think more times than not, we see a little bit of green to work with and we default to the less lofted club. So for me, I typically use like a pitch and wedge or a 50. I don't get into eights and nine irons too much. Uh, but I'll stick more to my less lofted like 50 degree wedge which is a gap wedge or my pitching wedge and as far as setup when I'm chipping I want to have the ball back in my stance so if I had the ball right in the middle of my stance the shaft would be straight up and down and when the loft of the club hit the ball the ball would go up into the air well that doesn't fit the definition of a chip remember the chip should be along the ground so when I move the ball back in my stance, what it does is it helps me take a little loft away from the club because I have the handle forward. Again, if I had it in the middle, the shaft would be straight up and down as I move it back in my stance. You see how the handle goes forward slightly. And this is the first place that I see people go wrong when it comes to chipping or pitching. I don't care which one it is. And they come to me and they have the handle leaned way forward and they're like, I can't chip, I can't chip, I don't, I don't know what's going wrong here. So there's a little guideline or a fix that I like to use here. And that is, I don't want to see the butt end of the club behind your belt buckle. I don't want to see it left of your left hip. So I think a good general rule, I've got a belt loop here, just kind of on the inside of my left hip. I'm just going to point the butt end of the club to. So that'll make it really easy to get the proper amount of forward shaft lean and keep us from having the handle too forward, too far forward, which is definitely the first swing fault that I see when it comes to short game. Now, we've talked about what club to use when we're chipping, and we talked about setup, where I want it in my stance, so the next thing we need to talk about is technique. What's the proper technique when I'm chipping? And I don't teach anything uh, new it's something that you've all heard before and I very simply teach a putting stroke and what do I mean by a putting stroke not a lot of risks so I get in my setup I've got my less lofted club I know I'm chipping I've got the ball back in my stance the handle slightly forward now I'm gonna make my putting stroke so you see this up upside down triangle or the pendulum I'm just gonna move it back and forth no wrists, and I'm just going to use the length of my stroke to dictate the distance I want. I can also change clubs as well. But there's one key factor, and this is the second place I see people go wrong when it comes to short game, and this is probably the most prevalent that I see, is, and it's the difference between the putting stroke and chipping, is I've got to scratch the grass under the golf ball. And I make a little joke at my golf school, that if I had a dime for every time I said scratch the grass under the ball we're right next to Naples Airport and all these private jets are flying out of here all the time if I had a dime for every time I've said that statement I'd be flying one of these private jets out of here so the first place people go wrong they lean the handle too much the second place is the scratch of the grass we've got to get the leading edge of the club under the ball to get the ball on the club face to create solid contact now the fix, I'm going to do this left-handed for you, but the fix here, or what I like to see my students do, or what I would really do if I was uh, playing in a tournament right now, is I'm going over here to this red flag. Hopefully you can see it across the green. I've got a bunch of green to work with, so I know I'm chipping. I'm going to get the ball back. I'm going to get my handle forward, but I'm going to make one or two little rehearsal swings, maybe three, and I'm making sure that I'm bottoming the club out right next to the ball and that I'm brushing the grass. I see dirt flying, I see grass flying. So I'm creating a feel of how much energy do I need to get the ball from here to my landing spot and eventually over to that flag. So I make one or two practice swings, finding the bottom of my swing, 
I step in and I just press repeat. And that was a nice little scratch of the grass under the ball. Created a little too much energy and the ball went too far. But I think you understand how I'm going to make that solid contact by scratching the grass under the ball. So we've covered two of them. We have one left to go. And the last one is what I refer to as an over-acceleration profile. And we've all seen this. We've either done it ourselves or we've played with the person who does it where they go from 10 miles an hour to 40 miles an hour on the forward swing. So rhythm is really important in all the game, but it's super important in the short game. And what I want to see here, I talked earlier in the video about being soft, being delicate, is I don't want to see the club accelerating. I certainly don't want to see it decelerating. I want to see it coasting into impact. So once I get the club going 10 miles an hour, I keep it going 10 miles an hour. I'm coasting into impact. And this will help take care of that over acceleration profile. Now, I'm standing on the range, I'm hitting drivers, I'm hitting seven irons. That's a power sequence. I'm loading up, I'm trying to create as much speed as I possibly can. That's a power sequence. I get up around the green and I'm chipping or I'm pitching, it's now a finesse sequence. And again, it's about being delicate, being soft, rhythm, and it just boils down to me being able to create a 10 mile an hour to 10 mile an hour swing, coasting into impact. So when I see people who double hit, think about what a double hit is. When I double hit a chip or a pitch, what happens is I strike the ball once, the ball takes off, but because of the over acceleration or the speeding up of the club head, I hit it again. So double hits, people who yip, uh, people who have distance control issues, even contact issues, I usually see this over acceleration profile. So let's do one of these. Let's, let's see if we could put all the variables together. So again, I'm still chipping. I've got my less lofted club here. I'm going to play the ball back in my stance. I'm going to have the handle slightly forward. For me, I'm going to be shooting for this uh, belt loop on my, my right hip because I'm a left-handed player. I'm going to make sure I get that nice little scratch of the grass. You're going to see me make one or two rehearsal swings to kind of find the bottom of my swing, which is a great way to rehearse whether you're on the golf course or on the driving range or around the short game area practicing it. And then the last thing I'm going to work on is the rhythm or the finesse, 10 miles an hour to 10 miles an hour. I'm not accelerating, I'm not decelerating. I'm just coasting into impact. All right, so I'm chipping towards my little flag over there, one or two little rehearsal swings. And then I repeat. Not too bad. So those are the three areas that I tend to see people go wrong when it comes to chipping and pitching both. But I'm going to take you over. I'm going to hit a couple pitches as well. We've done mostly chipping from this spot. I'm going to take you over and, and kind of go over these things as it pertains to pitching as well and make sure that we're all on the same page as far as setup, technique, what clubs we're using, and then making sure that we don't hit one of these three uh, swing faults or short game faults and that we can execute the shot the way that we're supposed to. So now I'm in more of a pitching scenario where you can see I've got to come over the bunker to get it on the green. And there's a few setup changes that we're going to make, but those three swing faults that I see when it pertains to short game are still going to be here and we've got to watch out for them. So first and foremost, now that I'm pitching, remember it's a ball that goes in the air. Remember the pitcher in baseball throws the ball in the air, doesn't roll it along the ground, so pitch, pitcher, in the air. I'm going to use a more lofted club. I've got a, a sand wedge now, a 56 degree sand wedge. And as far as setup, I'm going to play the ball more in the middle of my stance. 
So the shaft is now straight up and down. I don't want to lean it forward. If I lean it forward, I start to take loft away. The other thing I do is I start to expose the leading edge of the club and I start to get stuck in the ground. So I want to see the ball in the middle of my stance so I can engage the bounce. The shaft is straight up and down and now I can apply the loft of the club to the ball so the ball goes up into the air. So the handle here is not going to be forward and we want to make sure it's straight up and down and, and I work with people day in and day out and at just before they're getting ready to take the club back they like to have that handle forward forward or they just think when they're pitching they should have the handle forward so again the number one fault here is we gotta watch that handle now the next thing we talked about when we were chipping is that scratch of the grass under the ball same thing has to happen here now I'm gonna make a stroke as big as I need to get over this bunker and onto the green I'm going to create enough energy to make that happen. But as I'm making my rehearsal swings, you can see I'm still scratching that grass under the golf ball. It's got to be there. We've got to have it if we want the ball to go up into the air. And then the other thing, the third thing that we talked about was that over-acceleration profile. I'm not going to go halfway back and then to a full finish. That would be the over-acceleration, the double hit, the yips, the distance control issues, the contact issues that we see. So when I go waist high back, I'm going to keep it waist high forward and it's going to be coasting into impact. It's going to be rhythmical. I'm not adding speed. I'm not taking speed away. It's just coasting. So let's see if we can do this as well. So I'm going to make one or two little rehearsal swings here, finding the bottom of my swing. I'm going to step in. And I'm just going to start from that shaft straight up and down position, create a nice coasting rhythmical stroke, and of the utmost important, create some interaction with that turf under the golf ball, which you can see I did there. So hopefully you now understand how to fix your short game. It's going to fall into one of those three categories I just mentioned. You're going to have the handle too far forward. You're not going to be scratching the grass under the golf ball. And there could be some technique that things that fall into, hey, I have a hard time scratching the grass under the ball because I do this, that, or the other thing. But when I coach, I like to live in the solution and not in the problem. I can tell you that if you focus on scratching some grass under the golf ball, a lot of the faults that keep us from doing that are going to start to, to disappear. You're going to work through those things. And then the last part of it would be that over-acceleration pro profile. Learning to use better rhythm. Learning to coast into impact. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, there are two more available right up here that I promise will help you to continue to improve your game. And remember, please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and comment.